Right, here we go with the probability questions. And in the first one, we've got Julie, and she has 100 CDs, 58 classical, 22 folk, and the rest are jazz. Um, the rest is going to be important, so let's work out just how many there are left. She's got 58 and 22, so the remainder from 100 is 20, so 20 jazz CDs. Now, on Saturday, she chooses one CD at random. On Sunday, she chooses one CD at random, and again, from 100 CDs. So this is sampling with replacement. The probabilities don't change from one day to the other. So on day one, it's 0.2 is the probability that she chooses jazz because it's 20 out of 100. On day two, the three probabilities um, are exactly the same as they are on day one. So 0 0.58, 0 0.22 and 0 0.20. And so the other, the middle branch and the bottom branch are filled in, in exactly the same way. Now for B, we want the probability that she will choose a jazz CD on both days, so Saturday and Sunday. Now that corresponds to jazz on Saturday, jazz on Sunday, so it's straight on those two branches, um, and that's just one possible outcome. So we multiply along the branches. So we're going to do 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.2. That gives me my answer for B, which is of course 0 0.04. Part C, the probability that she will choose at least one jazz CD on Saturday and Sunday. So that means it doesn't matter whether she's got two jazz CDs or just one, um, we want those outcomes. So these ones with blue stars, they all correspond to getting jazz on the first day, so they all count. Um, and we could do those three branches individually, but the whole of that first branch on Saturday counts, so we just include 0.20. We don't need to multiply along the branches at all. And if you're not clear on that, you can ask me why. Um, secondly, we want to include uh, choosing folk on the first day, then jazz. So that's 0 0.22 times 0 0.20. And the third option up here is if um, she chooses classical on the first day and then jazz. So multiplying along there, 0 0.58 times 0 0.20. Um, so that gives me... Uh, let's have a look, uh, 0.116. So if I add together those three things, um, I get, uh, let's have a look, 0.36. And that is my answer. Right, question 31 is a little bit different. Three girls, uh, sorry, three boys and seven girls, and Mrs. Gold is selecting two children at random. To get two children, you have to not put the first one back after you've chosen it. So this is sampling without replacement. That means that once you've picked one, the system changes. There's one fewer person, so the probabilities change. So uh, the first one you pick, well, there's three boys, seven girls, so that's three tenths and seven tenths. When you pick the second child, you're not picking from ten children anymore. You're picking from nine, so all the probabilities are now out of nine. So I can go around putting uh, a nine as the denominator for all my fractions. Now, if the first child was a boy, then there's only two boys left, so two ninths is the probability there. There's still seven girls, so that's seven ninths. If the first child is a girl, there's still all three boys left, so three ninths is the probability there, but there are only six girls left, so six ninths is the probability of getting a girl. So the probability that Mrs. Gold selects two girls, well, that just goes along the bottom two branches, and there's just one outcome labelled there. So we're going to multiply along the branches. So we will do 7 tenths times 6 ninths. Work this out any way you like. I'm going to do a bit of cancelling. Um, the 10 and the 6 can cancel down to a 5 and a 3. And then I've still got a 3 and 9, and that can cancel down to a 1 and a 3. So all I'm left with in the numerator is 7 times 1, which is 7, and the denominator 5 times 3, which is 15. And there is my probability.